It all started on August 9 with an attack on Saki Air Base in Russian-occupied Crimea, at least 140 miles behind the Russian front line. Satellite imagery released the next day revealed a scene of utter devastation, with at least nine Russian warplanes completely destroyed and many others rendered not airworthy. One Western intelligence official later claimed the attack had put more than half of Russia's Black Sea Fleet naval aviation combat jets out of use, which would raise the total number of destroyed or damaged aircraft to at least 13, as there were 26 aircraft at the base prior to the attack. The second confirmed hit took place exactly one week later on August 16, when a Russian munitions depot exploded dramatically near Jonkoy, in North Crimea, some 120 miles behind Ukrainian lines. An electricity substation in the same area was also targeted and destroyed. Kyiv has been ambiguous about the provenance of these attacks. At first the Ukrainian government refused to officially confirm that its military was behind the explosions, mocking Russian claims that Saki Air Base went up in smoke due to an accident, perhaps related to cigarette smoking in the vicinity of combustible materials. On background, however, a host of anonymous Ukrainian officials have claimed responsibility and leaked disparate explanations to Western reporters. One told the New York Times on the day of the Saki strike that a device exclusively of Ukrainian manufacture was used, without specifying what this may have been, a drone, a missile, or some remote detonated bomb. The next day came the suggestion that Ukrainian special forces were responsible, not necessarily at odds with the first accounting, but more suggestive that whatever struck Crimea was not a missile fired from hundreds of miles away. Finally, on August 20, Ukrainian Defense Secretary Oleksiy Reznikov told the Washington Post that the attacks in Crimea were the result of a new strategy to degrade Russian forces by striking deep in the enemy rear. A cadre of saboteurs, a resistance force, as Reznikov termed it, had been cobbled together in January and were now working in conjunction with Ukrainian special forces, targeting ammunition depots, fuel warehouses and Russian command centers. For our American partners it's an absolutely convenient situation, because we didn't use American weapons, Reznikov told the Post. Yet former U.S. special forces operatives and military analysts doubt that ground forces planted the explosives, based on the publicly available evidence of the Saki aftermath. The craters visible in satellite photos are 10 meters across, Chuck Ferrar, the former squadron leader of Navy SEAL Team 6, told Yahoo News. And each is consistent with the explosion of at least 500 pounds of C4. No special forces team is going to drag a ton of C4 to a target when two ounces would be sufficient to destroy an aircraft. The simultaneity of the explosions also casts suspicion on the claim that timed devices were used to blow up an airfield, Ferrar added. Timers are good, but they're not that good. Another problem with the special forces theory is that no gunfire was reported by either unofficial or official Russian sources, or on the numerous civilian shot videos of the airbase attack. Then there was the timing of the attack, at 10 am on a weekday, such that Russian holidaymakers at a nearby beach witnessed the explosions and skedaddled anxiously from their bungalows. Special operations are usually carried out at night, under the cover of darkness to avoid detection by the enemy. This was a missile strike, another former US special forces operative said, asking to remain anonymous. Could partisans or special operators have been on the ground reconnoitering the targets for artillery? Sure. But nothing in those images tells me Ukrainians were setting things off at the scene. But if it was a missile, what kind? That's the question that has preoccupied open source intelligence sleuths and weapons experts for a fortnight. Despite several promising systems currently in development, the Ukrainians are not known to have anything in active service that can fly hundreds of miles. The longest range munition in their arsenal is the Tikkiyu tactical ballistic missile, which has a maximum range of around 115 miles, around 25 miles short of Saki Air Base. Moreover, there's nothing with that range in the publicly disclosed weapons packages provided by the United States or its NATO allies. The most advanced Western supplied artillery system, the M142 High Mobility Artillery Rocket System, HIMARS, has been supplied with M31 GMLRS rockets, which have a maximum range of about 50 miles. One likely culprit that could have been used for the Saki attack, according to experts, is the Army Tactical Missile System, ATICMS. A Lockheed Martin manufactured tactical ballistic missile, it can be fired from the M142 HIMARS or the M270 MLRS, both platforms Ukraine now possesses. With an even longer range than the M31 GMLRS rockets, the Atikms would place anything within a 190-mile range of the launcher within striking distance for the Ukrainian military, including anything in Crimea. Could it be that the United States has covertly supplied these missiles, or perhaps invented an artful workaround solution to allow a third party to supply them, thus creating plausible deniability? As of June, Romania had received 54 Atikms missiles. Turkey, 
an early and bold supplier of Ukraine's Bayraktar TB2 drone fleet, is also known to possess them. Poland is also thought to have received Atoms in advance of receiving high Mars platforms. All three are NATO members, but the stipulation in receiving these US-made weapons is that Washington's approval is needed to pass them along to another government. In any event, Ukraine now looks to be firing longer-range missiles it wasn't using before. And they all but certainly came from another country. According to one former CIA official, that would be the textbook definition of Western covert action assistance. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.